the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the EDB reports that Sri Lanka services exports are estimated to have grown 6.49% to 318.77 million US dollars in August from a year ago. Sri Lanka's government under newly elected President Anurakumar Disanayake will review Sri Lanka's deal with the International Monetary Fund. The positive sentiment at the Colombo Stock Exchange continues as both the ASPI and S&P SL20 end in the green once more, with the ASPI index edging closer to the 12,000 mark. And Asian stocks pull back from two and a half year highs, while the dollar strengthened following comments from Fed Reserve Chair Powell. From Studio 24, here's Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Export Development Board has reported that Sri Lanka's services exports are estimated to have grown 6.49% to 318.77 million US dollars in August from a year ago. The estimated value of ICT exports is expected to increase by 35.76% to $146.26 million in August of this year when compared to August last year. The estimated value of logistics and transport services is expected to increase by 7.01% to $146.37 million. The estimated value of service exports is expected to increase by 7.58% to $2,246.77 million during the first eight months of 2024 when compared to the corresponding period of last year. Construction decreased 62.62% to $18.84 million from August 2023 to August 2024 and financial services by 37.7% from January to July, the EDB said without giving specific numbers. The service exports estimated by EDB consists of ICT, BPM, construction, financial services and transport and logistics. In the month of August, financial services exports have grown 64.99% to 7.30 million US dollars year on year. Transport and logistics services in August have grown 7.1%. Consequently, total exports for August of this year, including both merchandise and services, were recorded at $1,483.13 million, increasing 4.67% over corresponding periods of 2023. The Cabinet of Ministers has given its concessors to appoint the Chairman of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, Duminda Hulan Gamua and Professor Anil Fernando of Sri Jayavadnapur University as senior economic advisors to the President. They will serve in honorary capacity according to the Cabinet spokesperson, Minister Vijita Herath. As per powers vested by the Article 41.1 of the Constitution, the President is empowered to appoint his staff by consulting the Cabinet of Ministers. Accordingly, it has been decided to give the consensus of the Cabinet Ministers to appoint Mr. Duminda Hulangamu and Dr. A.A.J. Fernando as senior Consultant of Economic Affairs and Finance on Honorary Basis. Cabinet spokesman Vijita Herat said Sri Lanka's government under newly elected President Anurakumar Sanayaka will review the island nationals deal with the International Monetary Fund. The Sanayaka's masses led national people's power during the election campaign has repeatedly said it would renegotiate the IMF deal as people in general are facing difficulties due to the global lenders deal signed under the previous government led by Ranil Vikramasinghe. Herat reported this at the new government's first weekly briefing to announce cabinet decisions, stating that first off they will review what is the content of the agreement and then they will go forward, adding that they have not taken any new decisions during the cabinet meeting. Herat said the IMF meeting is a courtesy call and nothing will be in depth. The Sri Lanka Export Development Board, in collaboration with the Sri Lanka Consulate General in Melbourne and the Sri Lanka Australia Chamber of Commerce, successfully organized a trade delegation to Melbourne, Australia in September. The delegation comprised 17 distinguished Sri Lankan companies, each selected through an interview process for their excellence in the food industry. 
These companies represented a diverse array of specialties including Ceylon tea, spices, processed food, coconut-based products and food packaging. The companies were chosen for their innovation, quality and potential to make a significant impact in the Australian market. This mission was a follow-up to the Aboriginal Economic Development Group's visit to Sri Lanka in September last year, which laid the groundwork for expanding trade between the two nations. As a key event, the delegation underscored Sri Lanka's potential in key export areas such as Ceylon tea, spices and food packaging. Delegates were privileged to attend the Fine Food Australia event of 2024, the largest trade event in Australia for food packaging and hospitality industries. This exhibition, known for showcasing cutting-edge products and top suppliers, offered Sri Lankan participants an unparalleled opportunity to meet with international partners, secure valuable deals and explore trends that could be incorporated into Sri Lanka's food export industry. The full-day event allowed Sri Lankan companies to network and gain exposure to the competitive Australian market. Sri Lankan delegations participated in business-to-business -business meetings organized by the SLCG and the SLACC during the visit. The SLCG has invited the Sri Lanka Business Council in Melbourne for business meetings to partnering with the Sri Lankan delegates. Let's take a short commercial break. Updates on the Colombo Boys and more on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The positive sentiment at the Colombo Stock Exchange continues as both the ASPI and SNPSL end in the green once more. With the ASPI index edging over closer to the 12,000 mark. And there is hope ahead for a fully bullish week as well. For an update on how the CSE performed today, we have with us Minal Vikramagri from Capital Lion. Continuing its upward trend, trading on the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a positive note. The market ended at 11,992.91 points, marking a 137.86 point increase from the previous session, with a larger turnover of 3.5 billion rupees. The S&P SL20 index also experienced an upward movement of 54.42 points to end the day at 3,505.83 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors with high turnovers and crossings recorded at Sampath Bank, CIC Holdings and Dada Garciada PLC. The tougher gainers for the day were Tess Agro PLC, Office Equipment PLC, United Motors Lanka, Paragon Salon and LVL Energy Fund PLC. The tougher losers for the day were Renuka Hooders PLC, Chris World PLC, Amana Takaful Life, Onelli Holdings, CT Land Development and Commercial Development Company PLC. With the IMF delegation set to visit tomorrow, there are growing expectations and concerns on what means for the development of Sri Lanka's economy. To get an understanding of how the visit and the continued compliance with the IMF timeline will reflect on the Sri Lankan market, we have with us Anzali Matthews from First Capital Holdings. Uncertainty and dull sentiment have diminished post-election, particularly with the confirmation of agreements regarding IMF policy and the reduced uncertainty surrounding the external debt restructuring process. In line with these, the Kalamba Bourse saw ASPI gains for the 11th consecutive day today, indicating positive investor sentiment. A high-level team from the IMF will visit Colombo from October 2nd to the 4th to meet with President Anura Kumara Disanayaka and Sri Lanka's new economic team to discuss the latest economic developments and reforms under the IMF program. They will also talk about a framework deal regarding international sovereign bonds, which is in its final stages. And we expect that the third review of Sri Lanka's IMF program will happen soon, with hopes of receiving the fourth tranche by December this year in line with expectations, and the implementation of the external debt restructuring is expected in December or January 2025, after the general elections in November 2024. The fourth review is also likely to occur in March 2025. Earlier in September, the Sri Lankan government announced an agreement in principle to restructure dollars 14.2 billion in ISPs, 
which involves the revising of the joint working framework originally agreed upon in July. The revised framework has been submitted to the IMF and the official creditor committee for further assessments, where these bodies will evaluate whether the agreement adheres to the principles of comparability treatment and the debt sustainability analysis. Sri Lanka must complete its debt restructuring before a review of its, of its sovereign ratings can happen, and this process will take an additional 8 to 12 weeks after the IMF and the OCC approve the revised framework. Gold prices were hovering below recent record peaks today after the U.S. Federal Reserve Chair tempered expectations for more substantial interest rate cuts this year. With investors looking forward to a series of labor data this week for further insights. Spot gold in 0.3% higher to $2,641.33 per ounce, over a higher record high level of $2,685.42 reached today. U.S. gold futures at 0.2%, higher to $2,663.10. Fed Chair Jerome Powell yesterday suggested the central bank will likely pursue quarter percentage point interest rate cuts moving forward and was not in a hurry after new data boosted confidence in ongoing economic growth and consumer spending. <music> Oil prices were little changed on Tuesday as stronger supply prospects and tepid global demand growth outweighed worries that escalating tensions in the Middle East could impact output from the key exporting region. Brent crude futures for December delivered edged up to 0.18% to $71.83 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures for November delivered gained 0.21% to $68.31 yesterday. Brent crude futures ended up in September down by 9%, the third month of declines and largest monthly drop since November 2022. It slumped 17% in the third quarter for its biggest quarterly loss in a year. WTI fell 7% last month and dropped 16% for the quarter. Alongside the demand concerns, OPEC Plus, which groups OPEC members and allies such as Russia, is scheduled to raise output by 180,000 barrels per day in December. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated further against the US dollar today compared to last week, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar has reduced from 295 rupees and 30 cents to 293 rupees and 50 cents, and the selling rate from 304 rupees and 33 cents to 302 rupees and 56 cents. The rupee has also largely appreciated against a basket of foreign currencies, including Gulf currencies. Now we'll look at the Sri Lankan rupee against other global currencies. Going in for a short commercial break, this is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. The city of Colombo witnessed a remarkable gathering of Samsung Salesforce as the company hosted its highly anticipated retail training summit and Samsung members welcome event at the BMICH. The event, which brought together over 450 professionals from across the island, was a resounding success with a strong focus on Samsung's latest product lineup, including the highly anticipated Galaxy A06, S24 FE, and the cutting edge Fold 6 and Flip 6 series. The retail training summit provided an invaluable platform for Samsung's sales team to deepen their understanding of the company's latest innovations, equipping them with the knowledge and skills needed to deliver an exceptional customer experience. Sang Hua Song, Managing Director of Samsung Sri Lanka, said the retail training summit was a testament to Samsung's commitment to empowering its sales force with the latest product information and sales strategies. 
and that by investing in the development of their team, they're better positioned to serve their customers with the utmost professionalism and expertise. Parallel to the Retail Training Summit, Samsung also hosted its highly anticipated Samsung Members Welcome event. This exclusive event was designed to celebrate the unvarying loyalty and support of Samsung's valued members, offering them a glimpse into the Samsung Members' future plans and initiatives. Tushara Ratnavira, the Deputy General Manager of Samsung Sri Lanka, added the Samsung Members Welcome event was a true celebration of strong relationships with the Samsung Members. They are grateful for their continued trust and are excited to unveil their ambitious Star Mission 2025 plan, which will redefine the Samsung experience for all loyal members. The successful execution of these events underscore Samsung's commitment to the Sri Lankan market and its relentless pursuit of customer satisfaction. As the company continues to innovate and evolve, it remains dedicated to empowering its sales force and fostering deeper connections with its loyal customer base. Businessman Dami Kapera has been reappointed as the non-executive director to the board and as the co-chairman of Haley's PLC with effect from today. The board of directors of Haley's PLC has informed the Colombo Stock Exchange in writing that Mr. Dami Kapera will be appointed as a non-executive director to the board of companies and as the co-chairman of the company with effect from the 1st of October 2024. The disclosure further states that the appointment has been reviewed by the Nominations and Governance Committee of the company and recommended to the board, which had granted approval on the 30th of September. Dami Kapera holds 51.01% of the ordinary shares of Haley's PLC as a date. Mr. Kapera is a philanthropist and business leader with interest in various key industries, including manufacturing, banking, finance, leisure, plantations and hydropower generation. In celebration of World Children's Day 2024, Sri Lanka Insurance Life extends its commitment to securing the future of the nation's children by offering rupees 1 million free life insurance cover to the parents of every child born today, the 1st of October 2024. Oh, in its third consecutive year is a testament to SLIC Life's ongoing mission to provide financial protection to families at a crucial time in their lives, while promoting the importance of life insurance as a safety Safety net. This free life cover ensures that parents of newborns will have financial protection during uncertain times that helps families to build a stable future. SLIC Life implemented the program nationwide extending its coverage across all hospitals in Sri Lanka to reach families in every part of the country. This initiative reflects SLIC Life's broader commitment to improving the financial well-being of the community and spreading awareness about the benefits of life insurance. This special project was first introduced in 2022 as part of SLIC's CSR program with the goal of protecting the future of the nation's children by supporting their parents. The success of the initiative over the past two years and the value it has provided to families have led SLIC Life to continue this vital project for the third consecutive year. Through a series of social responsibility projects, SLIC Life focuses on key areas such as child education, community development and preserving culture for future generations. These efforts contribute to the socio-economic stability of Sri Lanka, aligning with the company's mission to promote well-being and financial stability for all Sri Lankans. Group Chief Executive Officer of Sri Lanka Insurance Chandana L. Aludgama said, As a responsible organization, our commitment towards the well being of children goes beyond just financial protection. With the current challenging economic conditions, a safety net for everyone is essential, and they believe that insurance for all is a must. To mark this special initiative, a ceremonial event was held at Castle Street Hospital for Women in Colombo, where representatives from SLIC Life, hospital staff, and families gathered to celebrate this significant milestone. Beyond this initiative, Sri Lanka Insurance Life has introduced several innovative products that cater specifically to the needs of children and their families. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report.
Asian stocks pull back from two and a half year highs today, while the dollar strengthened following comments from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, which tempered expectations for significant interest rate cuts. Amid ongoing tensions in the Middle East, risk sentiment remained cautious. Oil prices held steady and gold traded just below the record high reached last week as investors awaited U.S. labor data for further clarity on the pace of potential rate cuts. Japan's Nikkei rose nearly 2% on a softer yen, rebounding from a 4.8% decline on Monday as markets adjusted to the news of Shiringo Ishiba perceived as a monetary policy hawk winning the prime ministerial contest. With mainland China's financial markets closed for the rest of the week, the recent rally that energized Asian markets took a pause. Similarly, Hong Kong's Hang Sheng Index also closed today. The S&P 500 spotted to a record high close, rebounding from a brief setback after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said the U.S. Central Bank is in no hurry to implement further interest rate cuts. U.S. stocks ended with modest gains on Monday, but enough for the Dow and S&P 500 to register record-closing highs. The Dow ticked up marginally, while the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq each climbed about four-tenths of a percent. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, speaking at a conference in Nashville, said he sees two more rate cuts this year totaling 50 basis points if the economy evolves as expected. Traders are now pricing in a 35 percent chance of a 50 basis point cut in November, down from more than 50 percent on Friday, according to CME's FedWatch tool. Investors will be watching to see if this week's key economic reports, including jobless claims and monthly non-farm payrolls, alter that picture. Stocks on the move included CVS Health, which rose nearly 2.5 percent after a report showed hedge fund Glenview Capital Management will meet top executives at the healthcare company to propose ways to improve operations. And shares of automakers slumped after Jeep maker Stellantis cut its 2024 profit forecast, with GM dropping 3.5 percent and Ford shedding 2 percent. China's factory activity shrank for a fifth straight month and the services sector slowed sharply in September, suggesting Beijing will need even more stimulus to hit its 2024 growth target with only three months left in the year. China's factories still aren't running at full tilt and the service sector doesn't look any better. That was the gloomy picture painted by new data out Monday. The closely watched purchasing managers index for manufacturers did nudge up a little to 49.8 in September. But that still left it below the 50-point line that indicates falling activity. It's now been below that level for five straight months. The numbers come just days after Beijing launched its biggest stimulus package since the pandemic. That included interest rate cuts and help for mortgage borrowers. Further measures are expected to include special bonds to fund increased subsidies for consumer goods and business equipment. Those moves continue to boost stocks, with China's blue chip index up around 8% on Monday. That put the country's equity markets on track for their best month in nearly a decade. Even so, Monday's figures also showed the service sector slipping into contraction for the first time since December. Put it together, and the data may suggest even more economic support is needed, if China is to hit its growth target of around 5% for the year. The construction sector was, however, one relative bright spot on Monday. Its PMI number hit 50.7, well above the key 50 mark. Last week, top leaders at China's Politburo meeting called for more efforts to boost the housing market. Qatar Airways will buy a 25% stake in Virgin Australia from U.S. private equity firm Bain Capital, posing a tougher contest for Qantas Airways that was dominated Australian routes and pushed back against giving access to the Middle Eastern career. Qatar Airways is set to acquire a 25% stake in Virgin Australia, challenging Qantas Airways, Australia's largest airline on the country's routes. Virgin Australia's CEO, Jane Hudlishkar, said in a Tuesday statement the deal was the missing piece to the airline's long-term strategy. 
In an interview later with Australia's ABC network, Hadlishkar said Qatar Airways, quote, has the expertise that we don't have that can help us compete better domestically by giving us access to that scale. Virgin Australia became insolvent in 2020 and was sold to US private equity group Bain Capital. Now it needs government approval for Qatar Airways' minority stake purchase. The deal is expected to be a cornerstone investment ahead of Virgin Australia's potential return to public ownership as Bain considers an IPO after purchasing the airline for $2.4 billion. Bain on Tuesday declined to comment further on the IPO plans. And that is all the stories we have for you tonight on the Nightly Business Report. Join us again tomorrow for more updates across the business globe. I am Sunny Mudal Naika. Thank you for watching. Good night.